Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome into the Learning Lab. As you can see, I am back with my awesome Anna Griffin Mink machine, um, some of the die cuts, and this time we're going to play around a little bit with some glitter. But before I get too carried away, come on in and let's get started. The last time we were together, I shared with you some images that I foiled. Okay, and there it is on that mint green that came out of Anna's kit. And I have just a couple of black spots. Someone said they contacted um, American Crafts and they said sometimes dust particles are there. So if you'll just do a light wipe across it, that would take care of it. I haven't tried that, but I will. But because my lighting was so poor on the first one that I did, I wanted to just show those to you again. Versus the deco foil. There it is. Oh, look at that. Gore Gorgeous. So I had done that. And then, of course, you know, I had done the owl and it's in silver so it's a little little hard to catch ooh beautiful but now this was the uh, mink foil and you can see some of those black spots that actually showed up in it versus the deco foil there it is and not a black spot to be found all of that came out beautiful this is a total segue before we get started uh, let me bring these back in I had gone online and I saw where a lot of people were complaining that their images their die cuts were not cut evenly all the way around so I said hmm, I didn't notice that let me get in there and look at mine and the ones like this most of the word ones and especially ones like these uh, they were fine but when you got to ones like this one you can see how this got really close over here, but it left a nice white border over there. And I know you're thinking, does it matter? It does once you foil it, because it really brings out that this is cut off and this is here. So a lot of them were severely uneven. There's that one. You can see I have a huge white border up here and it's cut to the quick, so to speak, on those. Even my, one of these word ones, live laugh love over here cut to the quick over here border and it's just not cut evenly all the way around so I contacted Anna G at all and she suggested that I contact American Crafts which I did sent them a lovely little email telling them about my dilemma and what was going on and so they are replacing my die cuts for me so I'm back today but this time it's with some images that I printed uh, myself off the laser printer I just I found this image but I did um, a 3 by 3 for 9 and I also did it a little bit larger and I wound up with my images cut out and my new toy will take any image that I put in there and give me a nice border going around it. And yes, it is the brother scan and cut. So let's go to it and let me show you how I was able to do that. Here I am with my newest toy, the brother scan and cut, which I absolutely love. And what I want to do is a direct cut. I have lost my stylus that goes with this. I'm hoping it will be able to see all of those flower images because they are a bit light around the edge. Now the machine is recognizing my scanned in pattern. Now if there's one downside I have to say to this brother machine is that the mat doesn't stay sticky. It's just like that green bug one when it first came out so I'm hoping they're going to work on that. Now that I've scanned in my mat this is what it looks like and what I've done is selected the cut area that I want the scan and cut to focus on and since I have nine images on there I want to do all of them so all I did was drag the arrows up to isolate the area that I want once I have that selected then I can go back and tell it how much of a border I want it to cut around my images and I select this button and I want the four hundredths of an inch it's a default to zero and when you first press it, it goes up to the 400. And I'm going to tell it OK. And OK. And now I want it to cut. Hmm. Looks like it's picked up an edge down here. So let me go back. 
and pull this up just a bit more. And now I want to just tell it to cut. And let's watch this thing in action. I am actually going to move my camera and back this up just a little bit. And that is just how fast this machine cuts. This video has not been sped up. Again, the downside is that the mat does not remain sticky for long. So I used some micro pour tape just to hold down the sides. I have my blade set at a depth of six. This is 65 pound weight of uh, Michael's Recollections cardstock. Now, let's check the cutting out of these. And let's do a lift off. Oh, well, <laughs> there it is, coming right out before I can even get to it. Look at that. There, that helps. They are beautifully cut with that 400th of an inch border around it. I think that it's perfect. I do have some in a bigger size. So while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and cut those, but I'm not going to make you watch. So now here we are with all of those images, beautifully cut, the same border going around on every side. Now let's get to the foiling tip. So in today's little foil off, I have purple and I'm choosing purple because it's going to be easier for you to see um, on camera. And I chose this beautiful uh, mink pink. <laughs> yeah, say that fast a few times. One thing to tell you is that when they put this together, they put a little sticky tab on here. So you have to peel up the sticky tab in order to get your foil to unrolling. So I just stuck it to the back. Here's a helpful hint, mink folks. You might want to use paper sticker instead of this clear cellophane sticker. It was first of all difficult to find and I had to pick at it and yeah, Consider a little like washi tape or paper or something. That would hold it very well. I have uh, plugged in and turned on my mink and I've set it at three, the recommended setting. And while it's getting warm, I'll go ahead and get my folder ready. So these are the two um, little images that I cut out, nice little outlines. And on one, I am going to place the hot pink. And then on the other one, I am going to place the purple, which is the deco foil. And uh, also from what I've been reading from reviews from people, make sure your image is totally covered by the foil. Because some people said during the transfer, it has left little black spots on their folder. And I think that's because the image wasn't completely covered. I, I don't swear that by me because I don't know. I've also heard from some people that their carrier sheets have been ruined after using it a few times. And they said they used paper and it worked out fine. So anyway, let's pull it in and get busy. My light has stopped blinking, so I think it's ready to go. And you feed it in uh, folded edge first, not the open edge. Let's get this puppy back where he belongs. Make sure everybody's nice and cozy and tucked in and then just gonna feed it through and you can feel when the motor grabs it a uh, suggestion from me if you're only doing one piece and it's small use that really small one that comes with it but if you have a couple of them on here as I do I wouldn't let that go because you don't want it to slip around while it's in there also I was on the Anna Griffin site and I read where some woman said she used the glitter paper and it totally wrecked her machine. So I was kind of like, huh, what? She said, no, it's no longer working. And I was like, wow, it's no longer working. 
so what I decided to do is I need to probably run some glitter through mine. So while that's cooling, I want to go ahead and bump this up to five. Because that's the setting for that. And with the mink, it's going to blink until it gets ready. So while that's blinking, I have already pre-cut a piece of glitter sheet and I'm using one of the pieces that came from Anna, my favorite moments, and the directions say you need to put this face down on top of your piece, and I'm using this particular sheet, the little tiny one, and then we're going to feed this one through, and when you're doing glitter, it actually says to feed it through twice. So as you can see, it's already heated up because it stopped blinking. I am going to feed it through with the hinge side, because if my glitter is going to stop working I or wreck my machine, I need to know before my warranty period time to return has passed. And according to Anna, you are to run the glitter sheets through twice. I don't know if there should be some cool down time in between, but uh, folder's looking a little warped, and I don't know if it has to be up or down, or if it matters. Huh. Okay, let's do it again. And while that's going through, let's take a look at my other ones, because they, they have cooled by now. And, <gasps> wow. <laughs> Let me just get both of these off. This one is the one from Anna G on that pink. There we go. Trying to find the sweet spot. Let's look at the deco foil. Ah, there we go. And there's the sweet spot on the deco foil. There we go. All right, there's the sweet spot on there. And you can see that purple foily. And if you see my light blinking, it's because I took it off of five and put it back down to three and it'll let me know when it's ready because it'll stop, but the directions say wait five minutes if you're going from a higher temp to a lower temp. There's the purple. Let me see if I can get that same sweet spot right here for my pink. I do have a few black spots on here, so I would more than likely uh, run that through again. Not, I'm sorry, and here is the Anna Griffin Mink. That's the pink, and you may not be able to see it, but I can see some of the veins on there that it did not catch. But uh, overall, did a pretty good job because those lines are very fine and very intricate. But I think it did a great job of catching them. Now let's take a look at the glitter. Here we go. And, whoa. Let's see, I think I need a brush to kind of get into there because glitter is everywhere. And on the directions, it does say to clean, and there's a little handle where you can hold on to it to take it out. And that's what's left over from where I did favorite moments. And there's some glitter that's in my transfer folder that Anna did tell you that you would need to clean out. So I will clean that. But in the meantime, I don't know if you can see this, but this thing is covered in glitter. Yes, favorite moments glittered in you can catch that, but look at all the glitter on the background. So let me um, pause, go get a brush, brush some of it away, and I'll be right back. Um, stiff tipped brush, because I really want to try to get some of that glitter out of there. That transferred to where I didn't want it, which was all over the background. This is also one that I didn't wipe down as recommended by American Crafts. Although the glitter looks fun, I don't know, unless there are some changes to it, I may just stick with the uh, deco foil. It is releasing though. I do have to give it that. And it's staying on the toner part. I'm not being gentle with this. I'm actually being 
pretty aggressive. The glitter is nice, but after this little moment, I don't know that I would be going to that over the foil. As always, thank you for joining me in the lab. Please be sure to check out my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com. Until then.